Screencast. I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to create kind of um, simulated LCD digital font, and along the way we'll use grids or show how to use grids uh, to kind of help us do that. So let's get to it. First thing we'll do is uh, bring up the document properties. I want to change the the uh, page size here, so we can say file uh, document properties. Bring that dialog up. I'm going to change it to um, 100 pixels wide by 160 pixels high. Okay, you can see that border changed. And I'm going to go to the Grids tab, create a new rectangular grid. And I'm going to show a major grid line every 10 pixels. So that what that means is that as I zoom in, you should see 10 squares along the top for 100 pixels and 15 squares down. And you can fiddle with those numbers. Um, I happened to, you know, practicing this when I, I figured these were good dimensions, gave me a good, you know, aspect ratio of the uh, digital font. So, um, or the LCD font. Next, we will create a rectangle. Oh, actually, before I forget, um, on the document properties dialog, you should also go to the snap tab and select snap to grids and it says snap only when closer than and you give a snap distance and find something like say now this is in screen pixels so uh, it it depends on what zoom level you're at as far as how well it's going to snap and basically something like eight will work for this but you can play with those numbers to get it working the way you want so what the grids and the grid snapping do is they let me draw to a an exact size without worrying too too much about it so um, if I want to create a rectangle, um, you can see that I was off at the side here. Um, but what the snapping does is let you quickly size right to the grid. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna want this to be uh, to fit right inside our document, so we can snap right to that line. Okay, let's make this. We'll bring up the fill and stroke dialog box, and we'll change this to kind of a dark gray, fully opaque. Okay, And we're going to want the corners to be a little bit rounded, so I'm holding the control key and the left mouse button and dragging those corners to get nice little curves on them. Next I'm going to create two squares uh, or two rectangles that I'm going to use to cut out uh, uh, the shape of a, a number eight digit out of this. So um, just click the rectangle tool again. We'll change the color to something a little con. Okay, still have that selected. Let's create our rectangle first and change the color. Okay, just so it contrasts with the gray. I don't want corners on this, so I'll hold control, drag those up to sharp corners. And now what I want to have happen is I want to get these borders to be two squares thick or what would be 20 pixels thick. So I can drag this out, try and take a guess here, maybe that's right. I'll duplicate that square, drag it down, and you can see obviously uh, I guessed right. So I've got two squares thick on each side. Okay. Now to cut these things out, uh, what I want to do is select these two, holding the shift key, and I want to turn them into paths, first of all. Object to path. And then I want to combine them to be one path. Okay, 
So path combine. Uh, change the. Actually, what it did is it stuck it behind the gray rectangle. We can just bring it back up here. Now uh, I can cut these out easily. I select the gray rectangle, hold shift, select the green ones, and say path difference, and now I've got them cut out. Next on the list uh, is going to be to slice this up a little bit. We no longer need the grid uh, that we have here. So what I can do is go to the Grids tab and just uncheck Enabled. Okay, so if we need to go back to it, we can always enable it. Again, if we want to make some adjustments, we don't lose it. Uh, but I just want to turn it off for now. Now I'm going to need some thin rectangles to kind of slice and dice this thing up a little bit. So we'll just draw them sharp corners, I guess. Uh, I don't know, we'll make them 5 pixels high. It doesn't really matter. Uh, one thing that's a bit easier probably is to, while that's selected, bring up the fill and stroke dialog box and just make them uh, semi-transparent. I'm going to need uh, two of these to start with, so I'll duplicate it, create a second one. The first one, I, I'm going to single click, single click again, and I'm going to rotate this up while I hold the control key so I can get 45 degrees this way, say. Uh, I actually want something a little bit shallower, one notch, so we'll go with this one. That's for that corner. Uh, this one, you know, the bottom corner, we can basically hold Control D, duplicate this one, um, mirror it. That's going to be for the bottom corner down here. This one I do want out of 45, so I'll do that. I'll hold Control D to duplicate it. Take that one back. I want an X here. And now what I want to do is join these two. So I'm going to window both of them. Path, union. Okay. Now, what I'll do is take this one. I'll drag it over just to where it intersects here. This one to the same degree. Okay, so you can just so it cuts that the same way. And I'll take this one and I'm going to drag that to try and get this thing centered. It's hard to explain but you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm trying to get these to be cut right along that center line at the corner. Okay? So that's why I'm going to cut that side um, but I have, also have to cut the other side. So what I'll do is I'll take these, I will window them all, hold Control D to duplicate them, mirror them, and then drag them over. Okay. The difference here is um, on this side, this one is the same, so we want to drag that over somewhere in the center again of those inside corners, but these two are going to be 45 degrees, so all I can do is single click, single click, and then hold the control key and just turn it up a notch and center that one on the corner. Same with this one. I want that to be a 45 and center it on the corner. Okay. Now an easy way to cut this out would be uh, window these ones, hold shift, window these ones, and I want to make these all one path so I can hit control K, combine them. Again, bring them up front. I hit page up to bring them up front. And now I can hold the, select the bottom one, select the top one holding shift, and say path difference. Okay, so there's my eight. Now the only thing I have left to do here to get this looking right, select it, and I'm going to break apart this path so I can take these little triangles away. Window them, delete. Window it, delete. There we go. Now if you want, you can also get rid of, uh, in the document properties, you can get rid of the page border. We don't need that anymore. So there's our kind of master digit here that we're going to work with. Just out of paranoia, I will uh, duplicate it, put it up out of the way. Next, I'll probably group this, and I want to have three digits, so I'll duplicate it twice. Bring one digit here, another digit here. Okay, so we've got three of these. I'll create a uh, colon symbol between. 
holding control shift I can put that where I want it, get the size right. Probably move it over slightly, duplicate it. You can be exact at this if you want. Um, I'm just trying to do it here for speed. I will uh, hold shift, highlight them both, use the dropper. Now the reason they look lighter is I think uh, because we had set the transparency, yeah, the opacity down. Let's make those fully opaque as well. So there we go. Now, let's make something with it. Now that we have these digits, uh, what we can do is say we're doing a clock type of widget or icon or graphic for our website, then what we can do is, uh, what I like to do is duplicate. I, I like to leave these alone. So probably, um, you can just again make another duplicate up there that we won't touch for now. We can ungroup these so I can select each piece as I want and I'm going to just select the pieces that make up that digit that I need. So let's say we're going to put a time of uh, 523. Okay, so we'll select the pieces that make up the 5 the 2 and the 3 as well as the colon and we'll bring in the fill and stroke dialog box and we'll change that to let's say a nice green bright like this okay so there we have those digits what I also like to do is to take those digits could have done this when I had them all selected. Group them. And usually I duplicate them. We can do it later. I duplicate them and I create a blurred copy underneath to kind of give it that glow uh, that I may want. Now we'll get these out of the way and we'll create a little clock display. Some kind of rectangle duplicate here and we'll change this to black. We'll hit page down to send it below the digits. Okay. And we'll likely want to take these gray ones. We still want them to show, but we want them to be darker. So they don't show as much. Something like that. Looks a little more realistic. Okay. So, we can put that, uh, we can highlight this group of the green digits, hold Control D to duplicate them, and blur them. Let's say five or six maybe. Okay, so that gives it a little bit of a glow here. Now we'll just do a little bevel around the side here. Um, I'll duplicate the black one. What I usually do is um, turn this duplicate into a path. We'll make it gray in color. And we will select the path tool. Hit Control J to make an offset. And we'll make that slightly larger. Okay, so now if we send that right to the bottom, and we just made a frame around here. Okay. Next, I'll probably uh, make the little kind of white reflection on here. Gives you a nice glass effect. We'll hit Control D, duplicate this. We'll draw some kind of shape. Hit F1 to select the shape. Hold Shift, select the black rounded rectangle, and we'll do a path intersection. Okay, once we have that, we'll turn that white and we'll drag it down. Okay, Somewhere close to there. And again, I'll double click it, hit Control J to do a dynamic offset. We'll just pull it in a little bit. Okay, And now once that's selected, I can hit the gradient tool create something like that. 
Okay. Now, if this is still these gray pieces to me are still uh, a little too noticeable. So what I'll try to do is select them all, which might be a little bit difficult here. Yeah, let's get this white thing slightly out of the way so we can select all these gray bits. Probably be best to group them as well. And just as a group, yikes, gray them down so they're just a little less noticeable. Okay, I'm not sure if that's much better. Hopefully it is. And then we can put a nice, uh, if we want, we can put a nice little shadow under here. Just using the ellipse tool. Make sure that it's full black usually, and then I blur it. And I might reduce the opacity just a little bit. So there's our nice floating little clock. Now one other thing you can do um, is actually change the look of this a little bit. If you window all the digits that are in here, group them, uh, you can actually just press a second time and skew them if that's the look you're going to go for. So that's it. That's our little uh, digital display. Maybe nice for trying to create a widget or, or some website graphics that you want to have. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for watching.